Welcome to our inaugural Spotlight, where I had a chance to talk to Dave Higdon from Virginia Tech. So we are here with Dave Higdon, who is the department head for the statistics department at Virginia Tech, and uh, definitely an integral part of our expeditions grant. Um, and we want to get to know you a little bit, Dave. Great. So, um, first, what is the primary focus of your research and um, what kind of goals do you have for that research? All right. So what, what I do, all right, so I'm a statistician, of course, right? And uh, now that I'm department head, maybe it's a little less research that I'd like. But uh, what I've worked on God, the last couple decades has really been putting together uh, big, large-scale computational models uh, with types of observations, maybe from sensors, maybe from surveys, maybe it's from, uh, you know, measurements, things like that, and then put those together to model some system. So uh, in Los Alamos, maybe it was a uh, weapon, maybe it was an aquifer or something like that. Uh, in this project, maybe it's an entire population, an epidemic going through it, and try to get uh, that model and data kind of together to look like the system that we care about, and then also to use it to make predictions, be able to put uncertainties on it, and then ask questions like if we change things or uh, collect more data or learn something better, uh, how does that reduce our uncertainty and what are the most efficient ways to do things like that? So my research in a nutshell is, is sort of like that. It's largely been on these old um, physical problems in my earlier life, so big uh, computational physics models, things like that, but more recently uh, social, biological sorts of data uh, applications have been the focus. So epidemics are this great move from something very uh, deterministic and physical to something that's uh, much more wild and social, which I like. And how, how do you conduct this research? I mean, are there, there must be supercomputers or some kind of HPC involved. So often, um, all right, so it's not always me. In fact, rarely is it ever just me, right? I'll often work with teams of people that are uh, maybe the modelers and they're coding these things up. So often they'll run on supercomputers. Uh, how it runs on supercomputers might be uh, different for different models. Some models might just take the whole supercomputer. A week later, you come back and you've got uh, a model run or something like that. Other ones can run in batches, things like that. Uh, some models are very uh, realistic, following physical laws, and some aren't. And so it's a uh, it's sort of an art to put together uh, the pieces that I do, developing statistical methodology with uh, the computer models and the types of data we have. And so where I'll do it, well, certainly there's lots of yakking and talking. So uh, Zoom happens a lot is where I do it a lot. Uh, meeting face-to-face -face has been great, but uh, we'll see how this new world is and, and how we do that. Uh, and then it's understanding uh, what are the constraints, the strengths and weaknesses of the different things you've got, different data sources, the computing types of uh, equipment that you have, uh, what kinds of, how long things take to run. And what you'd like to do is kind of, I feel like, oh, I'm a designer of uh, methodology that will kind of suit that sort of stuff well. And often what's fun for me is it involves uh, developing new types of statistical methods. Uh, new types of uh, methodology that take advantage of these constraints and features of the problem. So yeah, very... it seems like a lot of finesse has to happen. I mean, it's yeah. like, here's the the model, we run it. It's... Just jam it in there, right? The, the meat yeah, right. grinder, put it in, put the data in, put the computer in, turn the crank. Right, and the yeah. forecast comes out, yeah. Right. Yeah, that's right. So yes, I like to say uh, people don't realize it, but statistics, yes, yeah, it's this finesse, it's this artistic kind of thing at times, or at least the way I do it. Not everyone does it that way, but uh, <laughs> it's hard to compete in this like brute strength. And there's lots of really smart people that are really good at those sorts of things. And so I got to compete in this area that uh, more collaborative, lots of funny nuances that, uh, so that suits me well and that gives me lots of new things to work on. So how do you see your piece fitting within the larger expeditions program? Yeah, all right. The expeditions program is really exciting. So even though I'll be kind of a small piece of that, uh, what's great is it involves uh, subject matter scientists from things like uh, biology, genetics, epidemics, uh, computer science, networks, machine learning. So all these things kind of come together. And now uh, there's also these new modalities of of sensing and getting data. So not only are there kind of these traditional sources of uh, data that we got, ILI records, um, where, where people are, how they move, things like that from surveys, but now there's social media, there's uh, things like Fitbits or, or things that, that can see, you know, how much do people move around, electronic health records are getting more and more prevalent. And so there's all sorts of uh, new types of data and people that really know about these things 
uh, to put together in this thing. Along with uh, another exciting thing is this, uh, the social side, the modeling of human behaviors, uh, how will people gonna react to different sorts of stimuli responses and ep epidemics. So all of these modeling features and different pieces of data are really exciting to me. And so where do I fit in? In the end, I'll usually work with the modelers and the data people to say, well, how do we put these things together? How do we end up making forecasts? And eventually we're gonna to wanna to do this in real time. So eventually there's gonna be this question of how do we make forecasts fast? Usually we'll start in saying, well, how do we make forecasts slowly be to begin with and sort of ways that we like, and then we think, how do we make those fast? But we kind of think about both of those. So I see me fitting in as we're here, putting these things together and then uh, what we end up getting out from these models, how do we um, say how accurate that's gonna be? And then how can we use this uncertainty, which is kind of this, uh, it's one of the currencies of saying, what do we do next in making decisions? So if we want to uh, collect more data or make the model more accurate or um, change the system somehow to make people safer, um, currency is uncertainty. Well, we'll do moves and we'll do these changes and things in uh, the computer in the synthetic world and ask, well, how, well, how confident are we in, in the response that we seem to get and how likely is that gonna bring about you know, a good outcome? And so, um, so that's the world where I fit in. It's, it's on sort of that decision process and the modeling and putting the uncertainty on top of these things and saying, is the model good enough for this sort of purpose? Right. Um, so how did you get into this world? Yeah. All right. Good, good great question. So um, at uh, like long ago, I was an academic before I came back again and I, and I worked for a while on trying to do these bigger collaborative problems in the academic world. And, uh, great people to work with, but everyone in this academic setting is so busy teaching classes, doing all these sort of things. It was hard to do this. So I ended up taking a job at Los Alamos where you could do these big collaborative sorts of projects. You had more time and freedom. And then basically I traded my uh, time. I had to uh, do a teaching for like meeting time <laughs> and turned out all these big projects takes lots of meeting time. Right. But uh, that suited, like we said, that suited me really well. And so I started getting to these bigger collaborative sorts of projects, working with models and statistics and different types of data. Um, there. So I did that for quite a long time. And then more recently, I thought, oh, these, um, these models of social systems look really interesting. And I think uh, lots of uncertainty to deal with. And you have to back off on knowing here's the uh, physical laws that you're following. And all that looked really intriguing, along with these new data sources. So, um, so I kind of kind of stumbled into it that way. And so it, it's been really fun. Okay. Um, so what advice would you give to a student who, I mean, personally, I hear statistics and I go back, you know, actually I crawl in um, from, you know, my undergrad days. Uh, it wasn't yeah. really exciting or uh, to hear you talk about it, you make statistics sound so cool and exciting. Oh, so. yeah, it is. Aaron, it is cool <laughs> and exciting. Like people <laughs> listen to me. It's fun. So, so what advice would you give to a student who who maybe thought they wanted to get into research or get into epidemiology or, or computational science or networks. And like what might you, what might you advise them to say, think about statistics? Yeah. Okay. All right. So st statistics is great because it lets you play in, in kind of the cracks of all these different things. Like we talked about, how does the data inform things? Uh, how do you work with a computational model? How do you deal with all the constraints of these sorts of things? Uh, for instance, a lot of the data we get now is um, kind of convenience data. It comes from sensors, it comes from phones, but it's not uh, our old traditional kind of uh, very, very uh, thoughtful sampling and things like that. And so how much that informs us about the population is a much trickier question and it involves modeling and doing these sorts of things. So um, what would I say to a student? I would say, um, there's lots of interesting problems and more and more now kind of at the cracks of these big scientific projects is where statistical inference and these things really have a big role to play. So it means, oh, not only learn statistics, right? Some of the boring stuff. Yes, you'll have to do that. Uh, mathematics, uh, some of that will, will show up in there. But I think also a big thing now is to learn these other fields, at least enough to understand um, what are the features of different types of data that are collected. Um, how do human, I, I'm excited about learning, you know, how do human behaviors get modeled? Uh, how reliable are those sorts of things? What kind of data inform about these? And when do models suddenly change from being reliable to not reliable? So uh, learning about these different fields, figuring out how statistics can play a role. And then uh, for people starting out, what's really good about playing at these interfaces or in these bigger problems is that you'll typically find problems that uh, 
our, our research, but they're not super hard to solve. It's just no one has put all these problems together and like expose these spaces where you're working. And yeah. so uh, even a knucklehead like me can, can do some research, get papers published because we're doing something new because of this environment we're in. It's exposing new things rather than saying, oh, I need to come up with yet the best, uh, the best machine learning method yet to uh, classify this library of pictures. Like, oh, there's all right. sorts of smart people working on that. Right. But there's lots of area in these types of applications that uh, if you can just learn how it kind of fits together generally, there will be lots of nooks and crannies to do really interesting things. Um, that will be new and publishable, but you don't have to be a genius to pull that off. Right. Don't tell Madov I'm not a genius, though, okay? <laughs> oh, I won't. Don't worry. I'll check it. Sure. <laughs> yeah, edit that part out of this, yeah. <laughs> so, um, I mean, I'm guessing that doing what you do as a researcher in today in the middle of this coronavirus is very interesting and um, sort of strange. I mean, we're all in this sort of unprecedented time. Um, so aside from this, what is the most uh, surprising or interesting or strange place that your research has taken you? <laughs> Okay. Yeah. So you're right. This is wild times now. And it like really makes it brings home like, oh yeah, this is important stuff for us to try to figure out. Mm -hmm. um, and what lessons can we learn now that'll be useful the next time. Right. But um, all right. So, so uh, back when I was at Los Alamos, one of the things we tried to do was uh, like, we, as we talked about, these problems are big and complicated, but we still had to uh, explain, you know, why do we need to work on better computational models or why do we need to collect different types of data? Um, because it, it left to their own devices. The people that know about models will just say, oh, we need more money and funding on models. The people that do data collection experiments, we need more for all this sort of stuff. It's super important. Uh, and then statisticians, oh yeah, we need more too, <laughs> of course. <laughs> um, so, so to put that together, like we, we came up with this, you know, kind of real simple example that we could um, give to managers kind of explain the problems. And it was about just dropping balls off of a uh, tower and asking, well, how long would it take to fall? And there's Ooh. physical laws governing these things. But there's also uh, laws that are much more ph phenomenological, right? Like resistance due to air, air resistance, the different size balls, different diameter and different weights would fall differently because of this. And so, um, and so we tried to explain like, okay, yeah, different balls, like do we need to manufacture a different ball or some new t type of ball, mm -hmm. new experiment, give us more information? Do we need to spend money on making the tower bigger? Is that the problem here? Because maybe you want to infer something far away. Um, mm -hmm. do, we, um, do we have plenty of balls? And that's not the problem. It's about uh, detailed modeling of air resistance. Is that what we have to do next? And so we use this example to try to explain that. And it kind of took on this life of its own. And so uh, one of the places I ended up doing with a colleague, we thought, okay, we need some real data. Like managers like to see real data. So we ended up uh, going to uh, Vancouver and dropping balls off of bridges there and like filming it and trying to count, you know, calculate how long it took the different size balls to fall. Oh, wow. And so the managers all thought, oh yeah, this is great. This is really good. And then uh, what happened later was, um, as this took a life of its own, they thought you need to do like a really like how, how big a drop can you do? And it turns out, well, bridges are only so high and you can't just drop anything off of any old bridge. Right. And, uh, and it turned out that our uh, colleagues in the, in the Department of Energy also run like a big experimental facility in Nevada. And uh, what they could do, um, what they have to do is they run these very high stakes experiments, but they only do a, a, you know, a smallish number a year. And so they have to keep training and stay in shape so they can do these things and make sure they don't have any errors. So they're often willing to come up, you know, help us with uh, weird experiments as a training exercise, right? So uh, they said, you know what, we've got these giant shafts that we have, thousand feet deep. Uh, we could probably drop a ball off and, and get it, the, the drop time measured to within, you know, seven, seven decimal places in seconds. We thought, oh, yeah, that would be great. So uh, another thing we ended up doing was having a conference in uh, Las Vegas uh, where we talked about how do we do extrapolation? How do we put uncertainties on it? And then the finale was uh, we got to go drop these balls down this huge shaft. So that was probably the weirdest thing, the wildest thing that kind of happened. Yeah, no kidding. And having a bunch of statisticians meet in Las Vegas. Hmm. Hmm, yeah. <laughs> kicked out of the casino. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so uh, some of my uh, statistics friends are, are really into gambling and are really good at it. Right. And some uh, won't touch it. And, I, and there was a long time ago, there was a stat, a big stat meeting there. Yeah. And, uh, 
and Las Vegas, the hotel managers all said, you guys can't come back because nobody gambled enough. So they did all the sort of the data nobody collection. Nobody gambled on that. enough. No. <laughs> Yeah, well, I guess we know too much. Like, it's hard to do gambling and come out ahead. Right. That's why it's gambling. Yeah. Right? <laughs> <laughs> okay. Um, thank you, Dave. As a non-scientist, I appreciate your um, English. <laughs> All right. Well, thanks. Yeah, very few. My English teacher never said that in high school. Okay. So, on behalf of English. Finally, yes. Everywhere. Not that I am one, but thank you so much for meeting with me. My pleasure. Thanks for um, chatting with me.